Hello, and welcome to my second projectiles video. You remember, may remember our, my last video, where I had a ballista that was really easy to fire, and really easy to aim, and I had some kind of crossbow thing that was really, really powerful. Well, this, well, the crossbow was hard to aim, and the ballista was hard to get any power out of, so I decided to combine them. And that is what our video is on today. So there are two main sections in the fr function of this crossbow ballista. First of all, there's the trigger mechanism at the back here, trigger and cocking mechanism, and then there's the firing power at the front. I'm going to go over each of these separately. So first off, we've got the trigger and firing mechanism. So first off, we've got a little wheel connected through the, the here right here with an axle and a gear and this little winch with a string on it. So let's start with the trigger and firing mechanism. Here we've got a winch attached via an axle to a gear right here and a little handle right here that can be used for winding it up. When I twist this, it means I can pull this little hook right back and that help lets me cock my ballista. So right underneath the handle of this caulking mechanism, we have this little trigger. Of course it's red. I made it a bit bigger so it's easy to press, but it has to be red. There has to be a red button. Then it has this axle that goes straight through the bottom of the ballista, catapult crossbow thingy and winds up with this little stick right here. This stick catches on the gear, so when you try to turn the winch any direction except back, it catches, so this winch cannot let the hook go forward, which means I can pull it and stop, and nothing gets lost. However, because the trigger and little piece here attach, I can push the trigger, this piece goes up, and the cannon fires. You can probably see that how that works, like this. The rubber band just pulls it back so I can let go, and the rubber band catches everything. Next up, we've got the trigger system. To make this section easier, I've taken off the base of the catapult. So first off, we've got the two arms of the crossbow. Both of these can hinge freely. They just have an axle that runs straight down to a gear. Then they have these arms, which are strengthened by this bar and held in place by this bar, this white one underneath. Sorry, that's probably hard to see. And then they have these ball and ball connectors right here, which are each connected by a rubber band to the opposite side. This is where the hook connects and pulls the entire thing backwards, and what pushes our ammunition forward. Next is the confusing part. On the front of these arms, we have two axes that come down and are connected by rubber bands. They just pull forward. They're what helps the cannon come forward when the rubber band doesn't have enough power. Otherwise, chances are the rubber band wouldn't get any power because it's just being pulled back and not stretched. All that's being done is that these arms are being twisted back. To help these arms move synchronously, I have a system right here with two gears and this little piece. When the arms move back, this little piece moves forward, which helps them stay in sync. So as this model is pretty big and pretty complicated, I'm not going to show you exactly how to build your own, but I am going to show you some parts step by step, but most of the parts in chunks like this. This is the firing entry. Basically, it has, it's the front of the catapult, it holds on the firing power, the little crossbow arms, and the little mechanism. Basically, it just has a slot down here with two spaces, one for a plate and one for a tile, which lets this piece just slide on right there. This piece is part of the firing mechanism. Basically, it's just one by four stud bricks with little teeth racks on top, and a bunch of tiles and on the top of whatever kind I had, and then these, this little 2x4 plate. One important part about this is for everything to mesh up, you have to use these little headlamp bricks. They've got the half dent in, and then you can use those to hold a Technic little pull brick, and that will let your crossbow arms rest on that. Probably the simplest part of the catapult ballista crossbow thingy is this. This is the track that just holds the little uh, ammo. I've got plates and tiles on this side, on the sides, just hold something in and only tiles on the center so it's a tiny bit lower, lets things slide easily. And then I've got these little plates on the back, they're completely unnecessary but I like how they look. Looks like they kind of hold the winch in place, though they have no purpose. For my crossbow ballista, I can just take this piece and my track and plug it right on. I had this little 2x2 two two tile out, it was just staying there, so I decided to leave it. And this should just clamp all the way down fit snugly. And that 
is the main ramp of my crossbow ballista. Another important ba part, the base. I just have three bricks, a tile layer, then some Technic pieces with this little plate inside. One of my favorite things to use for hinges. And it just sits right there and the catapult balances right on top of it. Like this. And that holds it in place and let me lets me aim it while I'm firing. Also, this base is pretty large, which means it's stable as it firing as it's firing and it has no recoil wobble. So here are the pieces we're gonna need for the firing mechanism. Here I've got six little one by four tiles. These four of these are necessary. I use the other two to keep it from blowing itself apart. So they're kind of necessary, but only after three shots or so. Then I've got these two little one by two plates which are necessary if you want to build a cover for the winch. I just like having the cover. These are all used for the cover of the winch, though it's entirely unnecessary. Then we've got these two 1x4 bricks with these holes. This is used to hold the winch and various things in place. They are absolutely necessary to the firing mechanism. We've got these two one little six long axles. I've still got the winch around this one because it's a pain to take off and put back on. Then I've got this one. This one holds the firing mechanism. I've got this piece, this holds the trigger on, it's just got two, two round holes on the top and an axle hole on the side. Then we've got this little piece, this is the ratchet for the gear ratchet mechanism. Then we've got this little pin, you could use this or some kind of just straight too long axle, but th I find this is working for me pretty well so far. This is important that it has a hook, or they have some way to tie it around the rubber band because that's what's going to be pulling our rubber, our little spring launching back. Then we've got these two little upside down sloping pieces. I just like using them. They're not really necessary. I feel like they do make it a bit sturdier though. Then we've got this gear. This is another part of the ratchet mechanism used for the trigger. For the trigger, you don't actually need any of these red pieces, but I like using them. I've got this disc. It just goes upside down on those two holes on that piece. Then I've got these two little transparent red slope pieces, and they go right on the underneath. You don't actually have to use any of them though. And if you don't have these pieces, it's okay. You can just use one of those round pieces or any other color slopes. I like having it red because I like red buttons, but it's entirely unnecessary. We've got these hole pieces and this axle pieces. These are necessary for the trigger mechanism to work. You use them to hold the trigger part on. These, I use one for this and the other one just to match the opposite one. You could change them out for whatever kind of whole thing you want them to have. They don't even have to have it on the middle. They can have two offset ones like these. And last of all, this piece. It's used for cranking up the winch, and I actually tried a ton of different variations like barrels and domes and all sorts of things, but I found this actually works the best. Just plain and normal. So these are the pieces we're going to need for the firing power for our catapult ballista thingy. And I tried to lay them out in the order that we're going to use them in the shape, the way that we're going to use them, but if you think it's a mess, so do I. So. We start off with these two little curved pieces. We've got five by three. They each have an axle in the corner and a little curved line along the front. I just like the way they work. You can probably test with different things and find something else that works. But then I've got these two little corner pieces to support them. They go right on the bottom of each one and help hold all the axles and make it a bit more sturdy. These are what holds this rubber band, big normal Lego rubber band, to down and it basically just holds it onto the corners so that when it gets pulled back, it's pulling on the corners of this, not on the insides or anything because that would be pretty much useless. I've got these bars just for support along the top. It's probably completely unnecessary, but otherwise this only goes up half a plate and this way you can use a whole plate. Then I've got these little four long axles. These go down to the gears, which let both of these things move in synchronous, move synchronously. And I've got these little spacers. I've got four of them total, two more here and two here. These are actually used as spacers. These ones are used to hold on the rubber bands. We've got three here. We only use two on the front. I just forgot to mention this one. It's part of the trigger mechanism. And these two are the, actually the only pieces that are trigger that span both sides besides this little rubber band. These go across the front and this one goes across the back. So let's start building. Here's the first part of the trigger mechanism. We're going to need to take these two 1x4 little hole bricks and take our 1x4 plates, put one on the top and one on the bottom of each of these. And I've got this one right here. Doink and should doink. There we go. Then I've got these little 1x2 plates, and we just need to put these on the f whatever side you want to be the front of these. 
So it's going to be forward like this if you're aiming the catapult explosive. If you're aiming the catapult that way, then that's how we aim it. So now, before we add any other pieces, we need to take and put these on our catapult. So, one sec. There we go. I've got the catapult piece right here. And then basically what we need to do is we need to take our winch piece and take it and put it on the last hole of each of these. So it's closest towards the back. Then we pull this out nice and place it right on top so the winch is in those little slots if you have them. And this can be clamped down. I've adjusted my rope to be that long. I had it coming in one hole on this winch. There's holes on the sides if you haven't seen them right there. I have it coming in on one side and out the other. And I just take the excess, wrap it around and around and around again until it comes to the, almost the end and I wrap it underneath itself so it just stays tight right there. But then if I want to use it again for some other purpose, like an actually long winch, then I can just undo it and I have not wasted a winch. So then what we need to do is we need to take our two 1x4 tiles and put them across the back here if you want to do the winch cover, which I like having. And I've got my two other 1x4 tiles and I just put, place those across the top because I think it looks nice. And that is our winch mechanism for the catapult. Now what we need to do is add our little reel. So I've got my handle piece right here, I just hold this axle. The winch likes to wobble a bit in there because it's not completely two things wide. So then I hold it still and slide this on. And hold it still and slide this one on. This one's a bit trickier because it tries to go up through the handle. Which, yep, it did. So, all the way on. All the way on you go. There we go. And that is the entire caulking mechanism. To pull it back. We still need the ratchet though because otherwise it could just snap itself forward at its own free will. For the ratcheting mechanism of its catapult, we need to start by looking at the bottom. What we're going to do is add a series of bricks on the bottom that let us add the ratchet mechanism. First of all, we need these little bricks. I've got one here. Though, you, remember, you can choose whatever type of hole size you want. And one for here. And I've got these two little ones with the double hole. I put those each in front of those ones. And then I take my two slope bricks and put them each in front of those. So this just gives me a little row of bricks on each side. This is what I use my two plates for to clamp each of them down so they're all connected together and makes it a bit sturdier. And then what we need to do is take this little pin, or whatever kind is fitting in your hole, and put it right there. We're going to attach this rubber band to it later as we put on our ratchet pin. What we need to do first though is take this six long axle and stick it down the second hole on this mechanism. Then we can take this piece first, stay in, stay up, 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 up. So there we go. We can stick our pin in, and it goes all the way in, and then it works as a ratcheting mechanism against our gear, letting our gear turn one way, but not the other. To set up our rubber band, what we need to do is twist it. I like twisting it around my finger, so I just have it doubly looped around my finger. That may have been a bit too fast of twisting. Basically what I do is I take it, and I twist, and I loop it out onto the one finger. Then I try to slide that onto the ratchet pin while still holding it in two fingers. And I can loop that over this little pin right here. And there we go. Now the ratchet system is complete. Except that we have no way to fire except twisting this ax axle, which is largely uncomfortable. And then our ratchet pin can just slip out. So we need to add this. And to this, I just like to add my little trigger, my 2x2 two two disc right there, and my two little plates on the bottom. Makes a really nice, comfortable trigger. So now, I can twist this up however far I want. And then, if there's a strain on it, then I can release it. If there's no strain on it, however, as is produced by our power mechanism, then releasing it does nothing because the wheel doesn't really feel like turning. So it just needs that power. You know what? Let's build that power. So let's build the arms of our crossbow. First of all, I'm going to take one of these pieces, or two if you want two arms. I'd recommend two arms as that means you can actually fire. One arm isn't so useful. And I take the 1x4 axle and stick it right up the bottom. Then I can take this little piece and slide it right on until it meets the other one. So we've got flush along the top and what should be three lengths of axle sticking out the bottom. Now, let me quick do that for this one. There we go. So now, what we can do is stick our little ball and axle things all the way in. 
you should have a little half nub sticking up above on both sides. And then what we need is to take these little blue pins and stick them right in there so that this is approximately straight. If it's crooked, then this next piece won't go on quite right. We've got this next black piece, which can just be slid right on there. You should slide both on, on both of those pins and have them sticking up relatively so they're flush. And I just need to do that for this side real quick. There we go. Now what we need is to stick these in. Wait, no. We need this little next thing we need to do to prepare the arms of our crossbow is to take these pieces and on each of them slide one of these caps all the way down as far as it will go. That's for both of them. And now we need to assemble our catapult arms. We need to take the first arm and slide it through the hole right there on its long axle. Then we can take one of these little pieces and slide it all the way down so the axle is still free spinning but it's held in place so it doesn't fall out or anything. Then what we can do is adjust it so it's that our rack right there is all the way down. If it's up a bit, they'll mess this part up. And then rather than having this all the way up, which is a bit more than straight, we need to adjust it to a bit less than straight. Because it will fit with straight, but then when you've got the rubber bands on the front here, it'll pull in, which will start to pull these pieces off. And that is not very good for the structural integrity of your catapult. So pull it slightly less than, perpen than straight and slide your gear on. Should be so that you can't turn it all the way straight, unless if you're strong enough, then you can turn it probably almost straight, but not more than that. Otherwise, we're gonna wind up knocking some pieces off various places. So the next step in our process is to take these little pieces and add them onto the front of each one of these. So if we can slide them right on the front, then that'll give us a place to hold our little rubber bands. So those are all the plastic pieces that you're going to need for the firing power of your catapult. Next what you need to do is take these rubber bands, I like doing both of them at once, and just stretching them until I can grab both of these and just slide the rubber band on. And then what is useful is to move it down as far as possible along this axle. Because if it's up, then it'll start pulling these catapult arms up, and that'll move along this, which is going to make the entire thing fall apart, though it takes a long time to do so. The last piece of our catapult is to grab this big rubber band and slide it on from side to side. Then what we can do is loop it in the hook of our firing mechanism and our catapult is completely fireable. However, to make it easy to fire, I just built my little stand and I can clip that right on. And now my catapult crossbow ballast, a crazy thingy of awesome destruction, is complete. Hello everybody, thanks for watching, please tell me what you thought in the comments, and I'd love to know if you came up with any kind of special ammo. This is something I created, it's a flying pig, which you can literally make fly via the catapult. So I'd love to know what you thought, and if you have any ideas on what I should do next time, please let me know.